Hello again. The Barolong Boseleka are raiding for a big celebration this weekend. That's because their queen, Hosi Khabuilelwe Moroka, is preparing to officially ascend the throne. The celebration is historic because this royal family has regained its rulership through a Supreme Court ruling nine years after having been dethroned, dethroned by government. The Queen is ready to implement several programs to benefit her community. She joins me now for more on this. Hosi Khabo Muroka, welcome to today. Thank you very much for your time. Are you excited ahead of Saturday? Uh, Eric Dumedis, uh, may I please uh, pass my humble greetings to you, Remweyani, and the viewers. Excited? I, I, I'm not too sure if I'm excited, but I would say I am embracing and, and really feeling honored um, that the family has requested me to lead the nation. So, um, above everything else, not excitement, but um, honor and, and feeling very humbled. Yeah, honored, humbled, and grateful. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's perfect, that's great. But it's been a long journey here. I mean, uh, the royal family there, the, your, your rights were, were under dispute and the government had dethroned you. It took about 10 years to be recognized. I think it was in June as well this year when you were recognized as Mutsuaredi, the regent of uh, Barolong uh, Bosileka. These were very important developments leading to where we are today. Yes, uh, Ramayani, that's very true. It has been a, a very painful journey, um, but we look back today and we say as, a, as, a, as the royal family and as the nation that, you know, um, what God has ordained, n no one can ever take away. And so we, we appreciate all that has happened because everything happens for a reason. Perhaps things had to happen uh, for God to glorify himself, for us to understand that um, kingships or royalty is ordained by God. It was there even before the times, before the Bible was written. Um, we, we have and we do still relate to, to the, the, the stories in, in the Bible in the Bible about um, royalty. And so we appreciate uh, a lineage of um, almost two centuries. And we appreciate the journey that we have undergone. Where we are today is a process of restoration, a process of reformation. Now, uh, you, you are the first woman to ascend to such a throne in the history of the royal family. How does that make you feel? You know, Ramayana, I, I say it it might be the first for this family, but with it's not the first woman ever um, in the country or in the continent. It is circumstances that lead to certain decisions. Culture and custom evolve. Um, so I, I see it as just one of those um, circumstances where a decision was taken by the royal family because remember it is not oneself but it is a collective um, decision of the royal family to say um, where we are now as the royal family we would like so and so to lead we request so and so to lead the family um, and the nation so that's how i see it really um, yes it's the first woman arguably so um, my paternal grandmother, uh, Jose Khadi Mwibone Maria Moroka, was uh, a regent uh, for my late father, uh, Jose Mokopa Moroka. And my own mother, Jose Khadi Khaungalelo Moroka, has also um, acted um, as, as Jose for my um, late brother, Jose Khaupalelo Moroka Moroka. So, you know, women leading within the family is not necessarily something new. But we could say a princess, you know, yes, um, it is a first. 
And I'm sure we are setting precedents that um, if we all have the skills, if we all have the capability, um, it goes beyond the patriarchal issue. It's about who can take the nation to where the family and uh, would want to see the nation go to. Are you ready to ascend to the throne? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, look, uh, look uh, being born into a royal family, I, I truly say it's something that the Lord, you're sort of prepared unknowingly so. And when I look at my life journey, I think the Lord prepared me for such a time. I never knew, um, you know, my name, I have only one name, Khabuilelui, meaning Bukhosi Khabuilelui. And I never used to understand the, the meaning of my name, but the journey that we've traveled, um, then what we've gone through and where we are today, truly is uh, what we say in our language, so um, it is, a duty that I have to do and that I am obliged to do um, at the request of the family. Okay. I mean, Tabanchu is an area that's steeped, as we know, in rich culture and heritage. I mean, just there between yes. Bloemfontein and the border with, uh, with, with Lesotho, you yourself are very active. I mean, I've, I've, I've understood that you're very, yeah, like an activist type of a leader on the ground for the community. Part of the program this Saturday, I understand, in the lead up to your coronation, your ascension to the throne of uh, Barolong Bosileka, is a number of programs, including in the community yes uh, tomorrow we have the prayer for the nation which is something that's very dear to my heart it's also my birthday tomorrow um, but to me prayer is where it all begins and if we are to undertake a journey of reconciliation a journey of restoration reformation we have to start by coming together. So we invited all church denominations to come together in prayer, especially with the challenges that we face as a nation. And being a nation, I mean um, South Africa as a whole, uh, the social ills, the decay in, so, in our moral fiber. Um, so we, we thought it is of utmost importance to start with prayer. But on Friday, then we have a cooperation agreement that we are signing with Afri Forum in the morning, which is basically just walking in the footsteps of our forefathers. Um, we, our forefathers in, in the 1800s, Jose Moroka II, and followed by Jose Tipinari, um, had treaties um, with uh, the Afrikaners. What people do not know, the his rich history of Tabanchu, is that um, we saved, or my forefathers saved, um, the Afrikaners during the, the Difatani Wars. But also all the, the, the great tracks um, converged to, to Tabanchu before going out to, to the different places, all but one, and, and that one was the one of Port Fitter. But also all the other governments, uh, uh, like the Cape Colony, uh, Orange Freistad, Natal, were actually formed in Tabanchu. And fast forward to our now current government, um, the ANC. Yes, we talk about Mangawu, but the secret meetings um, were actually held in Tabanchu. When we speak about Salt Lake, when we speak about uh, Refenyang, when we speak about Me Ellen Kuse, all these people are actually... Um, part of the, the royal family. So this is um, very important to us, also to promote a non-racial um, society, to say if we are to pro pro progress as a nation, as South Africa, then we cannot hold on to the past for too long because it delays progress. Um, and we're looking to cooperate, especially in agriculture, because that's where the skill is. How do we teach our people? How do we get those that skill transfer that's really meaningful to get our people to a place of self-sufficiency and, and self-sustenance? Uh, 
And then we have the 21 Acts of Goodness, which is a, a program by Old Mutual Foundation, which was initiated in 2020 during the time of COVID. And it's a metric program where we support, uh, give support to, to, pro, to, to metric learners. And Tabanchi is one of the beneficiaries okay. of such a program. And then Saturday, we have the coronation. And Sunday, we have what we call wisdom lunch, where the elders will be around the table with myself to give me guidance and wisdom. Well, we wish you well for Tomamiso Yahosi on Saturday. All the best. And thank you very much for sharing some of that history, that rich history. I was not aware of some of the facts that you've just mentioned. One is going to have to go back and read a little bit more about uh, the role and place of Tabanchu in the history of this country. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, that's uh, Hosi Khabuilele Muroka. She's going to be ascending to the throne of the Barolong Boseleka nation in Tabanchu this coming Saturday, the 10th of September.